Hello and welcome to part 13 in this tutorial series on programming in C. In this part we're going to start developing a text or console based text game of Hangman. I thought it might be a bit of fun rather than learning again something in this video to use what we've learned so far to make a little game. And I'll put these videos also into a separate uh, playlist called Hangman for Beginners. OK, so what have I got? I've got the main function, which you're familiar with. I've got three library files at the top, stdio, stdlib, and, S, uh, and string.h. And inside the main function, I've defined, which we've seen in the last tutorial, what all this means, a multidimensional array of six words called guess words. And these words are going to be used for the hangman game. So the first thing we need to do in the game is we need to select one of these words at random. And inside STLIB, so the stand DILIB, sorry, the standard library, there is a function called rand, which gives us a number between 0 and I think it's 32767, 32767, I think, called rand max anyway. You can go on to c++.com and have a look exactly what it is for yourself. And the way we use it is quite simple. We say int, in this case we'll say random index equals rand, which gives us our number. Now obviously we want a number between naught, but well between and including naught and five, because green is at index naught, and apple is at index five, because remember arrays are zero indexed. So we need something between naught and five. And the way we do that simply is to modulo the random number by 6 because you remember that the modulo divide the modulo operator what it does divides by this number so divides the random number by 6 and the value that comes out is then the remainder so if a number is perfectly divisible by 6 the remainder will be 0 otherwise it'll be 1 2 3 4 or 5 if i just make here loop index equals 0 and make a quick for loop just so we can demonstrate that in case it's not completely clear. Let's just do five numbers here. Okay, so I'm going to make just for now another thing saying full rand equals not right. So I'll make full rand equal to rand. And now I'll make random x, oh, random index, sorry, equal to full round modulo by 6. And then I shall print the two numbers full round and our random index, like so. And as always, a new line on the end, otherwise it'll look slightly chaotic with all of them joined together. So I'll just run, compile and run this program now. And it's saying there's a mistake somewhere. What have I What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? I can't see what I've done. Yes, I can see what I've done. Okay, compile and run. And now you can see here we've got 18467, which then modulo by 6, the remainder it divided by 6, the remainder is 5, 4, 4, 4, 5, and 4. So at the moment, although we've only got 4s and 5s, you can see that we're getting the range we wanted with random numbers. I'll just compile this and run it again. You see here now I've added some more in. We've got up to 10. We've got a 2 here and some zeros. So simply, if I want a number from 0 to 5, then I modulo by 6. If I wanted a number from 1 to 6, then I would simply add 1 onto this result. OK. There's one more thing you may have noticed. If I, if I run this program again, we get exactly the same random numbers. And the way to avoid that, you have to do something which is called seed. I won't go into this now, but you simply have to put this at the top of your program, srand, time, and null, and then compile the program. And now when I run the program, you'll see we're getting different random values out. So what it's doing is, is changing the seed for generating the random numbers according to what the current time is. Otherwise you'll get the same random numbers generated again and again and again in your program. Okay, so 
we've got a, a command here or an integer here which says which the index of a word picked randomly at the start of our program. Loot it, loop index is simply a variable which we'll use for looping. So I'll put some comments in here. Index for random word. And now we need to assign a few more variables as well. So what do we need? Well we need, I won't put comment for this because it's fairly explanatory, number of lives, we'll say the user has five lives. So they've got five guesses. We need something to keep track of whilst the game is going, how many guesses are correct so far. And we also need, when we're looping, I'll call it old correct. I won't explain that now, but you'll see later why we've got this in as well. Right, some other things we'll need. We'll need to know the length of the word we've selected, because when we start playing the game, when the user enters a character they've guesses, guessed, we want to loop through each of the characters in our selected word and compare. So we need to know how long our selected word is, so we need to know so so we so we need to know long how long we loop for. So the way we do this we've already seen in a previous tutorial, so we declare another integer and call it length of word and we use strlen. And now we want to access the word at our random index. OK. And now we need another thing. We need a method of keeping track of which characters are correct and which are not correct. So that when we print the word in hangman style, we want to basically print in the place of the characters that haven't been guessed, instead of the letter, we're just simply going to print a minus. So what we'll need is, we'll need something else with six variables inside, which can be set to, say, zero or one, to say whether the character at that position has been guessed or not. And obviously there, you'll want something like an array. So we'll call the array letter guessed. And now we have to think about how big we want our array to be. Well, it's got to be at least as big as the biggest word here in our array. But for your argument's sake now, eight characters is safe enough, Windows is seven. And we'll straight away, because it's not much bother to type it, give ourselves the eight zeros in there. So we've created an array here, and we've set all of the integers inside this array to zero, which means all of the none of the characters have been guessed. When one is guessed, so for example, say the, the, the word is Windows and the user guesses N, which is correct, you see that N is at position 2, W is at 0, uh, I is at 1, N is at 2. So at position 2 here, the third naught along, this would then be set to a 1, so that when we came to print the word, we would know that we would be able to print the N rather than a minus because that character's been guessed. You'll see later on in the game how that actually works. And one more variable we need is a quit, which we'll set to zero now. And if the user quits during the game, then we'll set that to one so that when we break out of our user loop, we know whether the user has quit or not. Otherwise, we test for whether they've won or lost. OK, so that was quite a bit for this first video. It's a bit of setup. But basically, all we've done here is set up our variables, we've set up some words to be guessed in the handman game, we've then selected a word at random by getting a random index for our word, we've set ourselves up an array here so that we can keep track of which letters have been guessed correctly, and we've made sure we've stored in a variable what the length is of the word that was selected here. OK, so that's it for now. In the next video we'll start actually looking at implementing some of the game logic. Thank you very much. Till the next video.